Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, May June 2021, paper 3, three. question number 3. This is structured paper 3, which consists 6 questions, each of 25 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 3 hours. So we will be attempting to solve each question under 30 minutes. And this question number 3 is part of section A, which relates to financial accounting. So without any further delay, let's get started. Odul and Basha have been in a partnership for many years. On 31st December 2020, the partnership business merged with Carl's business. The proposal for the merger was made six months before it took place. One of the conditions for the merger was that Carl's accounting system had to be computerized. Now, for the first part of this question, we need to state four benefits of a computerized accounting system to a business. Let's write it down. So first, see, if you're talking about a computerized accounting system, then the information can be updated very easily because if we input one information, then in all of our financial statements, that particular transaction or information will be adjusted quickly. But in case of a manual accounting system, we would have to enter the transaction into a journal first, then move into leisure, trial balance, and so on. So that would be a lengthy process. Let's write it down. Information. updated easily secondly information is easily accessible in case of a computerized accounting system because we wouldn't have to go through folders and folders of different transactions documents right let's write it down so information easily accessible Similarly, a computerized accounting system would reduce staff costs because we would not need various staffs to keep a record of our day-to-day -day transaction or activities. Let's write it down as well. So reduce staff cost. Then lastly, a computerized accounting system will have better security of our transactions related to the business because we can put up a password and other people won't be able to access our accounting records. But in case of a manual system, if any person got their hands on our folders, they could go through everything. So that's a plus point. Let's write it down. Better security. So this concludes the first part of this question. Now we can move to the second one. We are given additional information relating to the draft statements of financial position for the businesses of Odul and Basha and Karl. Then we are given additional information. So the profit for the year under 31st December 2020 for Odul and Basha was 64,000 and for Karl it was 21,160. Similarly, the goodwill for the partnership had been valued at 50,000. So this is the goodwill relating to Adul and Basha. Then the goodwill value for Carl's business was to be the average profit for the last three years. And Carl's profit had increased by 15% each of the last three years. So we know the profit for Carl's business for the year 2020. Now we would have to go back and find the uh, profit for the year 2019 and 2018 based on the information that his profit had increased by 15% each year for the last three years. Let's have a look at the third information. All assets and liabilities were valued at the net book value except for these. So the office equipment and motor vehicles for Odul and Basha were actually valued at 580,000 and 88,000 respectively. Let's write it down. So I'll just write it right here. So for Odul and Basha, the office equipment will be 580,000. Whereas the motor vehicles will be valued at 88,000. All right. Then for car, the office equipment is to be valued at 230,000. The motor vehicles is to be valued at 62,000. And the trade receivables is to be valued at 35,000. So let's write above. That's for car. The office equipment is at 230,000. The motor vehicles is to be valued at 62,000. And the trade receivables is to be valued at 35,000. All right. Then for the fourth one, there was no partnership agreement between Adil and Basha. So if there is no partnership agreement, then that just means that the profit will be shared equally, right? 
so profit sharing ratio will be one is to one okay then after the merger it was agreed that the profit and loss sharing ratio among adul basha and carl would be two is to two is to one so this will be the new ratio after merging with carl's business then all the partners agreed that the combined goodwill would not be maintained in the books of account of the new partnership then lastly two motor vehicles had an equal value in the business of adul and basha so we are given the value of the motor vehicles right here and two of them had the equal value meaning that one had forty four thousand and the other one had 44,000. Then immediately after the merger, Adul would take one of the motor vehicles for his own use. So Adul would take a motor vehicle valued at 44,000 for his own use. Now, for the second part of this question, we need to calculate the goodwill of Carl's business. Okay, again, let's have a look at the information regarding goodwill of Carl's business, which is given right here. So what we know is that the goodwill value for Carl's business was to be the average profit of the last three years. And we know that the profit for Carl for the year 2020 is 21,160. Let's write it down. So that's profit for 2020. And that is 21,160. And we are also given the additional information that the Carl's profit had increased by 15% each year for the last three years. So what we can write is profit for 2019 and if we increase it by 15 percent so that's just multiplying it with 1.15 then that would result in profit for 2020 now we can easily figure out our profit for 2019 that's just going to be profit for 2019 equals to profit for 2020 which we already have that's 21,160 and we can move this 1.15 to the other side, or so that's 1.15. This will result in the profit for 2019 as 21,160 divided by 1.15, which is 18,400. Now, with the similar equation, what we can know is that the profit for 2018 is just going to be profit for 2019 divided by 1.15, so that's 18,400 divided by 1.15 which results in the value of 16,000. Now we need to figure out the goodwill. What we know is that goodwill is just the average of the profit for these three years. So that's the profit for 2018, 19 and 2020. So let's write it down. For 2018 that's 16,000. For 2019 that's 18,400. And for 2020 that's 21,160. So in order to figure out the average for these three amounts, we can just divide it by three. Now this results in the goodwill for Carl's business to be of 18,520. This concludes the second part of this question. Now we can move to the third one. We need to explain why the calculation of Carl's goodwill is based on the profit of the business. So what we know is that profits over a prolonged period provide interested parties with a reliable base because whenever we're talking about some sort of interested parties, we are referring to possible or potential investors, right? And an investor would only be inclined towards investing in a business if they see a higher return. So definitely profit is something that would be associated with return. That's a reason. Let's write it down. Profits over prolonged period provide interested parties with a reliable base. And we're talking about goodwill, right? Goodwill actually represents the reputation of the company, loyalty of the customers towards the company, and their other possible good features. So we are trying to associate profit with the goodwill. So what we can say is that any factors leading to a better profit will also include those factors leading towards the goodwill of the business, right? So what we can write down is that the factors leading to a better profit might include its reputation, loyal customers, reliable suppliers, and good location. Let's write it down. Factors leading to a better profit will 
include its reputations, loyal customers, reliable suppliers, and good location, etc. Okay, this concludes the third part of this question. Now we can move to the fourth one. We now need to prepare a statement showing the movement in the capital account for each of Adul, Basha, and Carl immediately after the merger. So this is just going to be the capital account, but in a vertical format. So whatever amounts we wrote in the credit section of our capital account will be recorded as a positive amount in this vertical format. And whatever we recorded in the debit side would be recorded as a negative amount because on our debit side of the capital account, we only record those information that would decrease the value in our capital account for each of the partners. All right, so we will start with our opening balance, which is balance brought down. And this will be the balance on each of these partners' accounts before the merger. So that was given in our statement of financial position above. Let's have a look. Right here. So what we know is that Adul and Basha had the capital accounts right here. And these amounted to 360000 for each of them. So this is a value we will be recording as the opening balance for Adul and Basha. And in case of Carl, we are given the capital balance to be 371100 All right, so let's record these three amounts in our capital account. So for Adul, that was 360000 for Basha, it was the same. And for Carl, it was 371,100. Okay, and since we are talking about merger, we also need to merge the current account balances for Adul and Basha to our capital accounts. Let's have a look above. So we can see the current account right here. And what we know is that Adul has the positive balance of 22,000, which means that Adul's capital account will actually be increased by 22,000. So we will have to record this information on the credit side of our capital account, which means that this amount will be recorded as a positive amount. But in case of Basha, we can see that the current account is of a negative value amounting to 5,600, which means that the capital account balance on Basha will be deducted by this particular amount of current account. So we will record this value in our debit side of the capital account, which means that in our vertical format, we will be recording it as a negative balance. So let's record these two amounts. We can put the heading of current account. For Adul, it actually increased by the amount of 22,000, whereas for Basha, it decreased by the amount of 5,600. So we need to put this in a bracket, indicating that this needs to be subtracted. And there was no current account for Carl. Okay, now we record the increment or decrement in the assets valuation for the partnership of Adul and Basha and the business for Carl. So let's have a look above. We know that all the other assets were valued at net book value except for office equipment and motor vehicles for Adil and Basha. So let's figure out the difference between the new valuation and the old valuation. And if the difference is a positive amount, then that means that there is an increment in the assets valuation. And if the difference is a negative amount, then it means that there is a decrement in the assets valuation. So for Adil and Basha, that's going to be the new value of 580,000 for their office equipment plus new value of motor vehicles amounting to 88,000, minus the old value of office equipment amounting to 564,000, minus the old value of motor vehicles amounting to 98,200. So let's calculate this. That's going to be 580,000 plus 88,000 minus 564,000 minus 98,200, which results in a positive balance of 5,800. So this means that the assets valuation for the partnership business of Adil and Basha has actually increased by 5,800. So we need to divide this increment among both the partners. And we know that Adil and Basha did not have any partnership agreement, which means that the profit sharing ratio is 1 is to 1. So we divide this increment in assets valuation equally among both Adil and Basha. Let's do that. So increase 
or decrease in asset valuation. So the increase for Adil and Basha was actually 5800 and we need to divide this equally. So we can just divide it with 2. That results in the amount of 2900 So this is the increment to be recorded in both of the Adil and Basha's capital accounts. So let's write it down. Since this is an increase, this will obviously increase the values in both of Adul and Basha's capital accounts. So we'll record this as a positive amount. So that's 2,900 and 2,900. Now we repeat the same process for Carl's business. So we know that all of the other assets were valued at net book value except for the office equipment, motor vehicles and trade receivables for Carl. So let's figure out the difference between the new value and the old value. New value for office equipment is 230,000 plus the new value of motor vehicles 62,000 plus the new value of trade receivables 35,000 minus the old value of office equipment 265,000 and the old values are taken from this column. Then minus the value of old value of motor vehicles which is 65,000 and minus the old value of trade receivables which is 36,000. Let's calculate this. So that's going to be 230,000 plus 62,000 plus 35,000 minus 265,000 minus 65,000 minus 36,000, which actually results in a negative balance of 39,000. So this indicates that there was a decrement in assets valuation for Carl, which means that the capital balance of Carl will also be decreased by this particular amount. So we need to record this as a negative balance in our vertical format of capital account for Carl. Let's do that. So there is a decrement, so that's a negative value of 39,000. And we'll record this in a bracket to indicate that this needs to be subtracted. So now we will have to divide the old goodwill values. So that's goodwill based on old ratio. So we already figured out the goodwill for Carl in our second part. And that amounted to 18,520. Let's write it down. And we're going to record it as a positive amount because we know that in our format for capital account, we used to record the goodwill based on old ratio on our credit side, which means that those amounts were actually added to our capital balances. So that's a positive balance. Now let's have a look at the information regarding goodwill for Adul and Basha. We are given right here that the goodwill for the partnership had been valued at 50000 and this goodwill needs to be divided equally among Adul and Basha since they did not have any formal partnership agreement. Let's do that. So the total goodwill is 50,000 and we need to divide this equally among two partners. So we can just divide it by two, which results in the amount of 25,000. So this is the value of goodwill based on the old ratio for Adul and Basha. Again, we will record this as a positive amount since the old ratio goodwill is recorded on the credit side of our capital account. So that's 25,000, 25,000. Now what we know is that goodwill are not to be recorded in our books of accounts, which means that we need to write off this goodwill based on our new ratio. So let's write it down. So that's goodwill written off. And this is actually based on the new ratio. And we know that the new profit sharing ratio for Adul, Basha and Carl is 2 is to 2 is to 1. Which means that out of 5 parts, 2 parts will be of Adul, 2 parts will be of Basha and 1 part will be of Carl. So let's figure out the total goodwill first. That's just the sum of these 3 amounts. Right, so that's 25,000 plus 25,000 plus 18,520 which results in the total goodwill of 68,520. So now we need to divide this total value of goodwill on the basis of this new profit sharing ratio. So for Adul, that's just going to be 68,520 times 2 by 5. Because out of 5 parts, 2 parts relate to Adul, which results in the value of 27,408. Let's write it down. And we know that the goodwill based on new ratio was always recorded on our debit side of the capital account, which means that it would have reduced the value of the capital account balances. So we need to record this as a negative amount in our vertical format. So that's 27,408 in a bracket. 
and we know that the profit sharing ratio for Adil and Basa is same, 2 out of 5, so the amount is also going to be the same. So that's 27,408. Now for Carl, that's going to be 68,520 times 1 by 5 because 1 out of 5 parts is of Carl. And this gives the new goodwill for Carl to be 13,704. Let's write it down. Okay, now let's have a look at the above information to see if we missed anything. Okay, we did the Goodwill ones as well. Okay, lastly, we were told that two motor vehicles had an equal value in the business of Adul and Basha. And immediately after the merger, Adul would take over one of the motor vehicles for his personal use. And we know that the motor vehicles that Adul will take over amounted to 44,000. And if he's going to take over the motor vehicle, he obviously has to pay the value of the motor vehicle back into the partnership account, which means that the capital account of Adul would actually be reduced by the same amount of the motor vehicle's value. So we just need to deduct his capital account balances by 44,000. Let's do that. And that's because he took over the motor vehicles. And this amounted to 44,000. This will reduce his capital account balances, so that will be a negative one. And we can also understand this because we used to record any assets taken over on our debit side of the capital account, which would obviously reduce the balance of the capital account, right? So that's a negative. Now this sums up everything that we need to include in our capital account. So now we can figure out the balance or the closing balance, carry it down which is after the merger. So for Adul, that is just going to be the sum of these amounts, which is 360,000 plus 22,000 plus 2,900 plus 25,000 minus 27,408 minus 44,000, which results in 338,492. Let's repeat the same process for Basha. That's going to be the sum of these amounts. So that's 360,000 minus 5,600 plus 2,900 plus 25,000 minus 27,408, which is also in 354,892. Let's repeat the same process for Carl. That's going to be the sum of these amounts. So that's 371,100 minus 39,000 plus 18,520 minus 13,704, which results in 336,916. So this concludes the fourth part of this question. Now we can move to the fifth one. Okay, so we were given the working section. Instead of scribbling all over the question paper like I did, you guys should be doing all of your workings in this particular box. All right, for the fifth part of this question, we need to calculate the value of the total assets of the new business immediately after the merger. So in order to do so, we could just prepare the asset section from our statement of financial position. So let's do that. Statement of financial position after merger. Okay, so we will start with our non-current asset section. Let's have a look above. So the only non-current assets we had were the office equipment and motor vehicles, and the current assets were inventory, trade receivables, and cash and cash equivalents. So let's write down the headings first. That's office equipment and motor vehicles. Then we can move to our current asset section. For current assets, we had inventory, trade receivables. and cash and cash equivalents. And now we can figure out the total assets. 
Okay, so let's figure out the value of office equipment after the merger. We know that the office equipment were revalued again. It's right here. Okay, so the office equipment for Adil and Basha were revalued at 580,000 and the office equipment for Carl was revalued at 230,000. So after the merger, we just need to add these two values in order to figure out the value of office equipment. So that's going to be 580,000 plus 230,000 which results in the total value of 810,000. So let's record this as the value of our office equipment after the merger. That's 810,000. Now we repeat the same process for motor vehicles. So the motor vehicles after revaluation for Adil and Basha was 88,000. And the value of motor vehicles for a car was revalued at 62,000. And what we also know is that Adul took over one of the motor vehicles amounting to 44,000. So this is no longer in the partnership. So we need to reduce that. All right. So now the total value of the motor vehicles after merger is going to be 88,000 plus 62,000 minus 44,000, which results in 106,000. Let's record this value. So 106,000. Okay, let's figure out the total for our non-current assets. That's just the sum of these two amounts. So that's 810,000 plus 106,000, which results in 916,000. Now we will figure out the value for our inventory. And inventory values were recorded at their netbook values. So we can just refer to our above statement of financial position. So inventory for Adil and Basha was 46,000 and that for Carl was 28,000. So that's 46,000 plus 28,000 which gives the total value of 74,000. Let's record this value. For inventory, that's 74,000. Now we repeat the same process for trade receivables. And trade receivables for Adul and Basha were recorded at their net book value of 83,300, whereas the trade receivables for Carl was revalued to 35,000. So the total value to be recorded in our statement of financial position after merger would be 83,300 plus 35,000 which results in the total value of 118,300. Let's record this value. So that's 118,300. Now we need to figure out our cash and cash equivalents which were actually recorded at the netbook value for a merger and we have the value of cash and cash equivalents for Adul and Basha to be 21,200 and the same for Carl was 9,000 so the total to be recorded will be 21,200 plus 9,000 which gives 30,200 so we need to record this value in our statement of financial position so that was 30,200 now we can figure out the total for our current assets, which is the sum of these three months. So that's 74,000 plus 118,300 plus 30,200, which results in 222,500. Now we can figure out the total assets by adding the total for non-current assets and current assets. That's 916,000 plus 222,500, which results in 1,138,500. This concludes the fifth part of this question. Now we can move to the sixth one. We are given additional information. Better profitability of the business of Adil and Basha is one of the reasons for Carl's decision to merge. We now need to advise Carl whether or not he has made the correct decision to merge with the partnership business. We need to justify our answer using both financial and non-financial factors. So if we're talking about financial factors that obviously associated with profit, and let's have a look at that information. So we were given the profit for Adil and Basha to be 64,000, whereas profit for Carl was only 21,960. So what we can say is that Adil and Basha's partnership has a better profitability than that of Carl's business. Let's write it down. Adil and Basha's partnership. has a better 
profitability then Carl's business nextly we can also compare the return on capital employed for Odilin Basha to that of Carl's we know that the return on capital employed is just the profit divided by capital employed okay now for Adul and Basha we are given the profit of 64,000 so that's 64,000 divided by our capital employed so capital employed is just the sum of the capital and non-current liabilities and we can see that there is no non-current liabilities for both Adul and Basha's partnership as well as Carl's business so we will only be dividing with our capital employed and in case of a partnership account the capital employed is the sum of capital account and current account which is given right here to be 736,400 we will divide it okay times 100 and this will give the return on capital employed for Adul and Basha's partnership to be 64,000 divided by 736,400 times 100, which is 8.69%. Now we repeat the same process for Carl. The profit for Carl is 21,160 and the capital employed is given right here to be 371,100 times 100 so this gives the return on capital employed for carl to be 5.70 percent so we can clearly see that the return on capital employed is better for adil and basha as compared to carl's business let's write it down so return on capital employed of Adul and Basha is 8.69 or we could say was because they are no longer a partnership and return on capital employed of Carl was 5.70 percent so obviously return on capital employed of Adul and Basha is higher than that of Carl okay this concludes our financial factors now we can move on to our non-financial aspects so what you can say is that Carl previously was a sole trader right but after joining a partnership with Adul and Basha he can actually use the expertise of multiple partners so let's write it down multiple partners will bring in different expertise similarly loss and risks are also shared among partners now and in the same way profit should also be shared now so previously carl used to get all of the profit that he earned but now he will have to share it among the partners so profit has to be shared and Carl might also have conflict among the partners right so that's a disadvantage me have conflict among other partners so based on these factors now we have to make a decision so I would personally say that Carl made the correct decision because obviously his uh, profitability as well as the return on capital employed was lower than that of Adil and Basha. So after merging, he might get a higher return. 
let's write our decision clearly so that's decision carl made the correct decision to merge with the partnership business So this concludes the sixth part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.